Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the entire series for the collectible minifigures series 21 from 2021. Uh, it's a mouthful there but these characters are great. Unfortunately there are only 12 in this series however these are some of the best and most detailed figures LEGO has ever put forth. When I originally heard the rumor that we were only getting 12 figures I was incredibly disappointed and then I saw this series and I was a little Bet I felt a little better about it, and then I had the series, and I am blown away by the level of detail, dual molding, printing, facial designs, new parts and everything, it, it's just unbelievable. This is one of the best collectible minifigure series LEGO has ever put forth, and it, it really shows how much love and care they put into these 12 figures, and I will, am perfectly willing to sacrifice four figures if it means that the LEGO minifigure line will stay this detailed and this amazing. The $5 price is still a little unfortunate. I really wish it was four still, but it's still amazing. Without further ado, we're going to jump on in. We're going to take a look at each of these characters, uh, the packaging and the manual, of course, first and everything. Each of these characters, I'll tell you what I think the best way to feel them out is, and then I'll give you my final verdict, and then rank them in order of uh, from my favorite to my least favorite. All right, and without further ado, let's jump on in and take a look at the first characters. All right, real quick before we look at uh, the first character, the dolphin girl, I want to look at the packaging. Now, I am missing the top half, which is just the little loop that hangs on the shelf and everything. I do think it's interesting the choices they've made for the cover here, considering there's only 12 figures in the series and there are nine on the cover here. Uh, it's interesting who they decide to exclude. It's still pretty good packaging. Green feels like it was recently done. I mean, not since series 11, I don't think, but it's still, green was an interesting choice. Not too much to say about this packaging. And here's the instruction manual. I always find these humors to look at. We got the character design on the front here. I do like, I, do, I like this one because the characters are bigger and they show more detail. But on the back, um, they tell us how to build certain characters and it's as ridiculous as ever. Like, I don't know why I need to know how to put the hermit crab together or the, the beekeeper or something. It's kind of weird. I always find it humorous what choices they like to put on here. But that's all I got to say for this manual. All right, and here's our first character, and that's going to be the Ocean Explorer, Diver, whatever you want to call her. She does have an accessory that's not pictured here, and it's going to be this dolphin, which I love in this sand blue color. The easiest way to feel this character out in the bag is to find this dolphin, because this piece is massive and very large. I also love this coloring. I believe it's exclusive like this, and it's really, really cool and definitely adds to this character quite a lot, especially because she does have her surfboard, so she can, you know, paddle out into the ocean to see the dolphin. This character's other accessories are amazing. I love this white printed surfboard here. It's got some really awesome coral designs and everything, which looks so, so cool. And her surfboard and her jacket do have the same logo, so I do appreciate that continuity right there. The black design is really cool because I recognize, like, that's what an actual boat would look like with that design and everything. So I think that's really, really cool. She also has this white paddle right here, which is really neat. I do appreciate its inclusion because you can always have her paddling away on the surfboard. She does have two uh, facial expressions here, like every character except for one in the series. And uh, she has a very nice hair hat combo here with the ponytail on the back. Always good to get some more of these. She's got some really nice sunglasses on the front here. And on the back, she's got a very happy, uh, expressive expression. And then pulling off her little life jacket piece, which is pretty cool, but also a little annoying because it does cover up this beautiful print. One of the best torso prints I have ever seen. I love that dolphin silhouette jumping in front of the palm trees with the sun and the seagulls. Just the color on that is amazing. She's got black arms and dual molded legs with a bathing suit print there, or little boxers and everything. On the back, she's got a really large logo, like the same one that was found on her surfboard. And I do appreciate the continuity, although it's different from the logo on the front of her hat. That's pretty much all I got to say for this character. She's amazing. The printing on that torso blows me away, and I love that it included three accessories, two of which are exclusive. A great start to a great series. All right, up next is what might be one of the most disappointing characters in the series, but not the me saying that doesn't really mean much because the most disappointing character here would still be one of the best in a different series. Now, I love this character for his accessories. That violin piece is amazing, and that's also how I recommend finding him. Uh, feel for the short legs, because there are only two characters that have that, him and the aviator girl. And then the violin or the Harry Potter wands, which there are two of in this minifigure, are quite easy to locate. He has a very basic hairpiece, and that's what's really bringing this character down for me. The wand is really nice for a bow for the uh, violin, and that violin piece is amazing. I really wish I had the violin case from series six, was it, uh, to see if this fit inside it, although I don't think it would just because of the size of the, the uh, grip right here. Uh, the printing is a little off. There's supposed to be four strings. There's only three, but I don't care because 
I think it would have been impossible to get the level of detail and print four strings. This piece is really cool. And I'm very excited to update my Vanya Hargraves custom. And just this piece has so many, so many uses. The character itself is cool. The hair piece I don't really like. He's got a very nice jacket here with the Blacktron logo and some, you know, green stripes and everything on this jacket, plain blue legs. He's got a concentrating kind of upset face on this side and then like a peaceful, relaxed, concentrating face on this side. And then some really nice uh, hood design from his jacket. Looks really cool. Great minifigure. Um, my only problem with him is really his hair piece. I don't like like and his jacket is cool i just i'm not a huge fan of the the logo underneath like it's just a white shirt with the the black tron what i believe is the black tron logo at least printed all over the place and i think it could have been a little more exciting but it's still a great character all right next we have one of my favorite characters in the entire series the castaway and he's also the only character to not have a double-sided face print excluding the alien of course how i recommend finding him is feel for the bottle or the hermit crab piece or the um the studs because there are two extra pieces for that poop piece and the uh, stud piece so it's pretty easy to feel him out he is his accessories are really cool there's probably my favorite part we have a really cute sh uh, message in a bottle piece right here though the message is printed on the outside of the bottle unavoidable but still kind of funny and that's just a normal beer bottle piece right there and then my favorite accessory is going to be this hermit crab brand new mold and the uh, shell slots onto a pole connection piece in the back that's just a stud with a hole in the recolored poop piece from the dog walker and that guy is so cute i love that new mold and it has a receiving stud on the bottom there so cute and definitely worth getting a couple of this figure to make a little hermit crab like terrarium or something this character uses the either the caveman hair or the hair from that ninjago character from the new legacy set although i know he appeared in lego before it's a really nice piece and i like how it kind of opens up so you can see his eyes and his mouth underneath his face is really cool. I like the, how it's scratched up. He was a bigger beard here. His hair's growing in with the stubble and everything. Again, no back facial expression. Really cool. He's got an armor. Uh, he's got a tattoo right here for an anchor. And then a really nice seaweed shell necklace with some really great realistic muscle detailing. He's got like the pecs detailed, but no like huge abs or anything. It's more realistic for a normal castaway. And probably the best part of this character is going to be his legs. They are dual molded blue and yellow. However, they printed extra blue stuff to get a ripped up jean look. So it's not like a smooth transition. It's a rough one and it feels so much more natural and smooth and clear and everything. And it looks amazing. And that's one of the many just unnecessary details Lego tossed into the series. That's like they could have just done normal dual molded legs. It's shorts, whatever. But they ripped them up just for that extra bit of detail. And I love that they were able to do that because that really makes this minifigure so much better. All right, our next character is going to be one of the two animal suit characters in this series. We have the Bumblebee Girl, or excuse me, the Ladybug Girl. The Bumblebee Girl was the one I was about to compare this girl to. Back from series, was that 10? They do share the exact same hair piece, but I do think this girl is better because she has the animal she's supposed to represent in a really, really cute fashion. Feeling this girl out, I definitely recommend looking for her back piece is how I found her. It's very large and very noticeable. You can also feel for the two flat studs there because you do get an extra Ladybug with this character. Her accessory is really cute. I like the leaf and everything and it's a really nice animal print there. I really love like having the minifigure and the animal, you know, together. And it's really nice that you can have this animal to represent the character. That's a really good inclusion there. This character has two facial expressions underneath her red little cap. And she's got a very happy one right there with her mouth open smiling, the red rosy cheeks that are stereotypical for a bumble uh, bumblebee, for a ladybug. I can't keep those animals straight. On the back, she's got a closed uh, lip expression with the same little bu uh, bumpy, you know, smiles and everything. She has no back torso printing. Instead, she has this shell piece, which goes over her uh, neck and everything under her head. And it's got an identical printing on both sides for those black little studs right there. I think it would have been nice getting it closed for the shell and everything, but I do appreciate the open wings too. It looks really nice. This girl has basic printing for polka dots. It looks like a, the five side of a dice on the front of her torso, plain black arms. And then her legs are actually dual molded, which I found very, very strange. They're red and black with black printed on to cover up the rest of the red to get that kind of like design. You can see under, in there, it's all red. And that's so weird. Like, I, I thought they would have just gone sprung for black legs with a um, crotch piece in red and then printed that little red over there and called it a day. But they said, nope, we're going to give them dual molded legs and then do some black printing. And it's another one of those, like, the, it makes the minifigure a lot more, you know, more better and everything. I don't want to say more better, but, like, it improves the design, especially because when you pull her back like that and it exposes this, that's red, not black and everything. The character continuity is great. And they could have easily gotten away with doing it a different way, but they decided to spring for the dual molded. And I appreciate that so much because it really just makes this character so, so much better. 
All right, the next character in the series is going to be the second animal suit character, the pug, and I appreciate him because we do have a pug in Lego form, and now we have a pug costume boy to go with him, him and his dog and everything. I think that's so cute. Best way to feel out this character would be for his massive little pug head or the bone included in the set. You do get an extra one, so you can feel for the two bones. I really like this accessory because it is exclusive. We've never gotten the bone in this teal color before. I think that's going to be really useful for people who have, like, dogs and everything as part of their sig figure and their mocks and everything because this is a cute little dog toy you can give them that we don't have in, like, you know ever before this pug has some really great printing as well medium legs with some uh, dog toe printing right there which is always appreciated the torso has a little kerchief a uh, bandana tied in the, uh, in the front hanging down and then the knot and everything's in the back along with a little tail for the dog which is adorable pulling off this really nice i believe yeah that is dual molded headpiece with some really cool printing we have a very happy expression for the boy there i'm looking forward to using that for some other figures and we have a little boy sticking his tongue out and that could be used for so many different things it gives you a better um, unobstructed look at the handkerchief excuse me sorry a uh, very great looking figure not my favorite in the set by any means but because i don't really like dogs that much but for people who do and especially people who love pugs like my cousin i think this is a great great figure and i'm probably gonna have to get him one now all right, one of the best and most surprising characters in this series is going to be the centaur woman, and she is so cool, and obviously the best way to feel this girl is going to be finding the centaur body because that piece is massive. Literally, I could see her character without even touching the package just because the bulge was that massive. Um, this character is one of my favorites. I love seeing the centaur piece in a readily available set because you can get a ton of these uh, for, you know, massive building of centaurs and everything although the color will be the same i really like this piece is being used more so than just the harry potter line because i'm looking forward to getting like a whole herd of centaurs and everything it's gonna be so so cool uh her accessories are pretty neat she's got an apple right here i guess stereotypically centaurs horses apples i guess she's got a brown quiver and a brown bow uh very you know stereotypical of a centaur for the nature people you know bows and everything it's the exact same accessories as the harry potter characters and her body is dual molded she's got this very nice caramel color with a dark reddish brown tail which doesn't match her hair color i think it, minifigure would have been improved a lot if the tail and the hair were matching i think that would have been really really cool i might try to sub out her hair piece and everything to get the continuity going there uh her face reminds me a lot of hermione so does her hair piece actually i believe it's the same one for one of the hermione figs she's got some really nice freckles and a closed face expression there and on the back her mouth is open she's happy and smiling she actually has gauntlet printing on both of her arms which is so cool and a really nice antler design in her shirt with some uh leather you know wrapping up the neck there for some printing a really nice golden i like to say maple leaf on her belt and that belt does continue on the back along with some nice little shirt designs a really great figure tons of detail and i love getting the centaur piece in this series it's just such a good piece and i'm really happy to see it appearing more all right our next character is going to be the beekeeper and i originally was a lot more excited for this guy than i actually am now and that's because his accessory is a lot worse than i originally thought i thought it was going to be a brand new molded piece and it's not it's two different colored pieces Put together that don't really look all that good uh, to feel this character out in the bag feel for his two by two tile he's the only one with a two by two tile you can also feel for the two super jump pieces or his massive hat combo right there that's pretty easy his accessories, accessories are two pieces put together here one in light gray and one in metallic silver and it looks terrible like why would you do put them the, the same color or make a new mold or something like this is the most disappointing part of the series like the upside down cup does not work at all for the kind of like bee honey thing they're trying to promote here and there's just connect like that and that's one of the superhero jump pieces you do get extra one in the series and i just hate that accessory this accessory, however, is really good. It's a very nice printed tile right here, a honeycomb with two bees on it. This character would fit great into the bee farm, and, you know, you have a bunch of larger scale bees to buzz around him. I might actually do a video putting these characters into different scenes, uh, Harry Potter, the Minecraft sets, all over the place. I, I don't know yet. But this character has some really nice detailing, especially some really cool unnecessary detailing. His legs could have been plain white. In the past, Lego would have done plain white legs. But this time, they have really nice gray accents on the side of the leg and the front of the leg and everything to do just you know spice up the figure and that's so cool and so unnecessary he's got a brand new hair hat combo there it's like a little sun hat with a visor in the front to protect him from the bees and that comes down over his shirt and his shirt has really cool detailing too a lot of a zipper in the front and wrinkle lines with this honeycomb logo and then spilled honey the farmer i say far yeah farmer he's got the exact same facial expression on both sides however in this one he's licking his lips and this one he's not he's just smiling and there's again some like wrinkles and you know wear and tear on the back of his torso which looks amazing again so unnecessary but also so amazing although this character is brought down in my eyes by this really bad accessory by far my favorite character in the entire series has to be the aztec warrior he is without a doubt 
So cool, so detailed. The best way to feel him out would be to find his sword, shield, or hat. All of those are very large and bulky pieces and very easy and, you know, exclusive to this character. You're not going to mistake them for anything else. His sword, to my best of my knowledge, is a brand new mold. It's a very nice blade with some of these cool black rocks, um, four of them on each side. That looks really, really cool. And his shield is even better. This is such a cool print. I haven't seen anything this cool since the Ninjago uh, Season 14 shields. They've got some startling blue eyes, which really contrast well with the black and gold and the maroon on the outside and everything. This shield is so much better than the last Aztec shield. And I love how it doesn't have a stud in the center. And this is so much better. Just such an amazing print something i haven't seen in lego before and then this character is decked out in printing i could not have added, like they can't add any more printing he is so full and it looks so good he is covered head to toe in these awesome black cheetah like tattoos uh maybe representing the cheetah tribe he comes from the cheetah on his shield and then his hat his hat here his mask is molded into what looks like a uh, lion's face or cheetah face there's a really cool feathered headdress here with some which in gold with some really nice maroon detailing really nice blue designs on the sides here some more of that cheetah print on the ears and the side of the face then the nose and eyes on the front brand new mold looks so cool it's just such an amazing design and then we get this figure and this figure we're gonna start at the bottom work our way up he's got toe printing for those claws moving up he's got some of that tattoo on this on the fronts here and then he's got this kilt with some really nice blue highlights on the maroon base with a black like bottom part then coming up he's got a belt right there which almost pretty much continues the uh, design right there it's a little off center but that's okay he's got a very impressive set of abs coming up a bunch of more tattoos and the really really cool uh crown uh, around his neck some kind of like uh necklace or something looks so cool and then moving up he's got a bunch of swooping tattoos along some maroon face paint and a very upset angry expression on both arms he has a bunch of tattoos and bracelets which looks so so cool he also has side of the leg printing for that maroon kilt coming down with the black bottom and then some brand new uh tattoo designs for the cheetah spots and everything and on the back he's got a very happy expression you know same printing and everything just you know change the mouth and then he's got that continuous of the necklace and then some more swirling prints and everything which looks so cool they just decided to cover this guy head to toe in some of the best design prints i've ever seen i could not have added anything more to this character he is perfect and well worth the five dollars all right, the next girl is going to be the young aviator, Amelia Earhart, whatever you want to call her. Uh, she has a very, very large plane piece, which is how I found her. She the, and the centaur lady and the uh, diver, the dolphin, the centaur body, and the plane are the easiest characters to find in the series. And she also comes with a little helmet here. You can sub out her hair piece for her little aviator helmet, which looks pretty cool. And she's got a very nice pair of goggles right there. And we'll pull that off. We'll put that back on later. Her facial expression is quite nice. She has a very happy expression here with a little hashtag score scar on the bottom there on the back same face same scar just a smiling expression instead of a uh, uh happy one and everything and pulling off her body you get a better look at her plane piece right here and that's very large and it fits on uh the legs right here you can put on anyone reminds me of the race car from series 18 it's got a black propeller piece on the front there and then this character has plain blue legs plain blue arms and then a jacket with a zipper going up and then three things here it looks like a JP in cursive for a name tag. Something in blue that I cannot read for the life of me. Let me know in the comments down below if you know what that says. Then we got a little gold crest right there. And on the back, we have a very nice propeller in gold. Looks really, really cool. Definitely a really cute character. Not my favorite or anything because there's nothing too outstanding here. But still a great figure with some really great parts. Our next character is going to be the Space Policeman, and he is decked out with four accessories that all clip on and a huge armor piece and a helmet. He looks like someone you do not want to mess with. He is very, very, like, decked out. He looks so cool. Best way to feel him out, I actually felt for his police riot shield because it's a very large piece and unmistakable. Four studs, the blank spot, and the little handle on the back. You can also feel for his gun or his armor. There's a ton of pieces here. We're going to start pulling away his accessories. Here he's got a baton with a light saver hilt and a light piece there. Works pretty well. On the back, he's got a pair of black handcuffs and a black one of these Marvel guns. And then here is his police riot shield. It's one of those roof pieces with a police printing right there. The star signia is the same as the top of his helmet. His helmet piece is comprised of a red visor and a brand new dual molded mold here. Like a, that black part that connects to his armor is completely unnecessary. They could have just done a white helmet, but they pulled out all the stops of the dual molded brand new piece here. So cool. His facial expression is a little disappointing. It actually looks like the original Kai without the scar, which is 
interesting. Maybe Kai grows up to become a space policeman. Happy expression on the back here. Not the best face, but I don't think it really, really matters considering that this character, you know, will have his helmet on all the time. You can't really see the face. His armor piece is great. It's brand new with the classic space logo there. Some really nice bulky armor. I really love the way that looks. And he's got two grips on the back there for, to hold accessories. You can change them around too, make him hold whatever he wants. Although you'll be hard pressed to get him to hold the police riot shield. It goes on the side like that. It wouldn't really, really work. He's got to hold that one in his hand. Now, printing wise, he has the actual classic space spaceman logo here. And then like, this is like a redesigned legacy version of the spaceman print from way back when, like in the wave two of those lines, they had like the black and white guys and they had a torso print looking exactly like this. And it's so cool to see that. I love the zipper and the logo. Amazing. We got dual molded legs here with some extra printing going up to give him some like high tailed boots. So cool. A gold belt buckle on his belt too. And then police on the back of his torso print with some really nice line designs. So much unnecessary design here because most of it gets covered up and overshadowed by his armor and everything. But they said, nope, let's give you all the printing. And it's amazing. Even though I don't really like the policemen figures because they're not exclusive or something new even though we've gotten characters like this before with astronauts and the space police line i still think it's so cool because it's such a fresh concept and there's parts and prints here that we've never seen before all right second to last character we have the space alien here to combat the space policeman and he's really really cool i like aliens this is a fresh concept with a brand new mold uh best way to feel out this guy would be the crowbar which i found or the chi crystal you can also feel for the lack of a minifigure head his crowbar is here in gunmetal gray which looks great we have a legends of chima crystal i would have preferred this in a recolor maybe red would have been really neat but um maybe trans red trans green something i just have so many of the trans blue ones it, it's not really all that special this character much like the aztec is decked out in printing we're going to start at the bottom again and work way up uh the orange first off great base color orange jumpsuit i love it uh he's got some toe printing right there boots feet not sure what that is and then we got simple black lines leading up and curving off his uh, his chest and i love the continue like the continuity there between his legs hip and uh, torso piece and then looks like this character has to have a breathing apparatus we're gonna jump to the top real quick i love the exclusive head mold with the black little dots in the back there the scaly speckles the eyes then he's got this like black rim going around the entire bottom of his face and then this breathing apparatus here with some bars that like connects to his torso and then he's got this whole like metal thing going there with some tubes leading to the back with a circle in the center uh, maybe that crystal powers his breathing apparatus or something because he's got to breathe the toxic earth air he's got some really great arm printing there with the black up top and then the lines like the coming down the side of his hands and that same kind of line that continued on the front of his torso and his arm comes down the side of his foot he's got side of the foot printing too which continues the design on the front thing there's like boots or something and then you know same printing on the other side here on the back he's got these like vials of liquid or something and more of that design everything that's his breathing apparatus that connects to it and it's this whole like continuity system to help him breathe and i love that it looks very alien like and great the printing here as a whole is amazing i just really like the way everything comes together to form a really well printed character and it's just so detailed because the last alien we got like they used to never give arm printing or leg printing it would have been a cool torso a cool head and an accessory and that sells the character and now we have every available surface printed side of the leg top of the leg bottom everything and i think that's such a neat concept all right, and finally, we have the final character in the series who leaked probably, a, I think, like six months before the rest of the series did. Very awkward for Lego. She's one of the easiest to feel because she's going to be in her own individual bag due to her cape. Or I say cape, more like torso dress cape. I don't know. Uh, and she's got a very elaborate headdress, which is how I found her. And uh, her accessory is going to be a microphone stand. And the microphone stand has a microphone that you can clip on. Pretty cool. You get extra pieces for almost all these. Not the grip, though. It's a pretty cool one. Nothing too special. You can ever hold it, whatever. Uh, her facial expressions, by the way, are amazing. We'll get to that in a second. Working our way down, I do have a problem with her headdress. I love the purple and teal. Purple and teal are some of the best looking Lego colors, and they're so rare. And to get both of them here combined for one minifigure is fantastic. I love the feather design, and the purple crown is amazing. I love the silver sparkles too. They look so good. My problem is this should have been purple, not teal. I just think it would have made it so much better. She's got a purple hat with feathers on it. Instead, it's like a purple teal hat with feathers on it. And it doesn't look quite as good as it could. I think it would have been so much better to mix them together and everything, but... Oh, well, I mean, I, I'm not complaining. It's a great figure. Now, her facial expressions are wild. She's got some beautiful uh, pink and per pink, purple, blue makeup on there with some sparkles and everything. And she's uh, closing her eyes here and screaming her song. She can scream into the microphone. On the back, it's the same makeup. Her eyes are open and she's like got a more normal expression. Uh, her dress piece is 
It goes over the legs and it's very sparkly. Its base is white. It's got some silver shinies. It's great. Uh, her legs are dual molded, uh, purple and teal. And she's got the same kind of police officer boots that kind of like curve up to give them some more length and width and everything. Her whole torso is covered in sparkles. And then her legs are covered in sparkles from top to bottom. It looks so cool. I love how they just liberally applied them. And it looks so good. Her torso is also covered in sparkles. She's got a purple belt there and a purple necklace. And then coming down with her dress, which is teal, also covered in sparkles. I love that there's some of those in purple actually, and then some of them are silver. And the reflections of the light is amazing. It looks so, so cool. I also love how the printing continues onto her back and it, it, her back is exposed and doesn't look great because lego can't seem to print uh print flesh tones on torsos whether that's like the tan the yellow whatever it is uh, i do like though how it, like her back's exposed the necklace is still there and the dress comes down on her lower half it's realistic for what a singer would wear this figure is great incredibly detailed the sparkles are my favorite part i love the way she shines and reflects all the light and everything and again purple and teal great combination definitely a great figure although it's so funny how early this one did leak all right, and before the final verdict, I just want to go over my ranking of these guys from uh, worst to first, as, as uh, some people would put it. And that's not to say any of these characters are bad. I actually love this series so, so much. It's one of the best. And the worst character here is some of the, would be like the best character in other series. And I'll talk more on that in the final verdict. But in my personal opinion, my least favorite character in this series is going to be the Aviator Girl, simply because... I don't know. She just doesn't really appeal to me all that much. The plane piece is really cool, but all the other prints and everything are very basic, and there's not too much about her. The next worst character is going to be this gentleman right here, the space police man, and I just don't really like him because we've seen him so many times before. And he does have some cool prints and some cool stuff, and his shield is also upside down. I just noticed that. But he doesn't bring anything new to the table. He's a very old hat, great print and great design, would be one of the best characters in any other series, but here... It's just kind of a meh for me. Next is going to have to be the uh, dog suit guy. It's a dog. It's a suit. I like those. But at the same time, eh, I it's just a dog suit. There's not nothing like too special about it. We've gotten dog suits before and everything. It's just kind of meh. Uh, from next is going to be this violin player. And he is adorable. I love the accessories. But the actual character is, again, kind of, kind of meh. I mean, he's really good. The printing is nice. It's just not as great as the next couple characters when we take a look at. Uh, speaking of which, next up is going to be the beekeeper. And he's really cool for the uh, beehive print and the uh, hat right there. Looks great. His accessory is a bit bad, but he's still pretty great. And all these characters coming up next are amazing. I love the ladybug girl. She's adorable. Great, great accessory. I love how we get an animal in the human counterpart. I think that's such an inspired idea. Next is going to be, and this was really difficult to pick, but I think the surfer girl is going to have to go here. I love her torso print and her accessories, especially that dolphin, are so, so cool. It's just, I don't think she's quite the pizzazz that some other characters in the series do. Bringing us into the top five, we have the dancer girl. I love her sparkly, like, teal and purple design looks so cool i love all the sparkles and spazzles and everything it's such a good design minifigure and so exclusive amazing just really eye-catching with some great personality uh for the top four the fourth best character in the series is going to be the alien i love him simply because that printing is unbelievably amazing it's one of the most detailed figures i've seen in a very long time and i think he's just perfect for that next is going to be the castaway and i like him because it's such a cool idea. We haven't necessarily gotten this character in the past before. I love the hermit crab piece. The bottle is awesome. There's just tons of aspects about this character that I love. And just comes together for a really neat guy. Uh, then the second best character in the entire series, in my opinion, is going to be the centaur girl. And I just really love the idea of a centaur and a CMF. You can really build this character, you know, army of centaurs for your forest or anything. Great printing, great accessories. But in my opinion, the best character in the series is going to be the Aztec warrior. I love the way that character looks. He is just simply one of the best in the series in terms of printing and design and everything. And he represents amazing improvement over the last Aztec character we got all those series ago. And I just think that's so cool. They revisit a character and grew him in such an amazing fashion because it definitely was a character that merited that. That's really all I got to say for my ranking though. And all these characters are amazing. As a whole, this series is one of the best LEGO has ever produced. I would definitely rate it 100 out of 100, 10 out of 10, uh, A++, because none of these characters are duds. The closest thing to a dud I can imagine would be like the Aviator Girl or the uh, Violin Boy. But even then, their accessories are amazing and something people would really, really, 
really want, especially the violin boy. The worst printing in this series is some of the best in another series. I can, like, if I were to rate all the collectible minifigure series, these guys would all be tip tippity top because these characters are amazing. As soon as you can find them, definitely get out there, grab them, because I cannot recommend any of these stronger. In the comments down below, I want to hear which characters are your favorite. Rank them. Least favorite, most favorite, whatever you want to do, and let me know if you were able to find these and where they are. For a $5 price point, I think... For some of the characters, that's more than fair. Like for the Aztec, for this uh, teal and pink girl, for the centaur, for the dolphin lady. But for others, it's kind of like this girl does not seem to value, you know, quite as much as like the Aztec because she's really lacking on printing and parts and everything. And I don't think $5 is a great price. I really miss the $4 one. And I'm going to mention this every time I do a CMF video. But still, this is one of the best series I've ever seen. I can't express that enough. Uh, thank you guys. That's all I got for today, though. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you all in the very next video. And we you all have a fantastic and safe rest of your day.